do not spend the money you do not have to buy what you do not need to impress people who do not care. That's interesting. There's a quote here by Robert Hunt. It says that the better you feel about yourself, the less you feel the need to show off. The better you feel about yourself, the less you feel the need to show off. Do not spend the money you do not have to buy what you do not need to impress people who do not care. It's a must-read book. And there's another book here by the same author. Create your own net worth. Create your own net worth. Create your own net worth. He says that your money is temporary. Your net worth is eternal. Your money is temporary. Your net worth is eternal. Another quote says, every man has a worth. Not every man has a net worth. Every man has a worth. Not every man has a net worth. Create your own net worth. Another must read book. This book is also there for you. Where there is problem, there is money. Very interesting book. Exciting book. Where there is problem, there is money. This means that in Africa, because we have a lot of problems, then the, uh, we have a lot of money in here. Where there is problem, there is money. There's a quote here, do not focus on money. Instead, focus on the problem that needs to be solved for the world. Money will follow you as a byproduct. I like that. Do not focus on money. Instead, focus on the problem that needs to be solved for the world. Money will follow you as a byproduct. So this book, you learn how to turn problems into your stepping stone to wealth. Another book here by the author. Why does God take from those who do not have and give to those who have? Why does God take from those who do not have and give to those who have? Warren Buffett has a quote here. No matter how great a talent or efforts, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Let me take it again. No matter how great the talent or efforts, some things just take time. And he's given an example. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Interesting book. Why does God take from those who do not have and give to those who are? And it will tell you that those the poor is so poor because the poor things that he's not having. And God is taking those that they think they don't have, giving to those who are working on it. The last book I have here is Poverty Mindset versus Abundance Mindset. This is uh, number one amazing best book. In fact, most of the books here are all best-selling books. All the books here that I've shown to you are all best-selling books. Poverty mindset versus abundance mindset. Real poverty is not in the size of your pocket, but in the size of your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why we are here. The topic we want to discuss this day, depending on where you are located in the group, is... the wealth of the poor. And the question is, is it true that the poor has wealth? And that is why we have gathered to listen. I want to confirm whether my speaker is on. Oh, DSA is on. DSA. 
is on. Uh, my technical director, are you ready? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this evening we have this great man of God. He is such a great man. He's been my, my man for some years now. And trust me, he has been a wonderful journey with him. Pastor Sandy has written over 300 books. In fact, the books that have been translated into English, like those I've shared with you, are 300. But he has more that have been written in Russia. And he is such a blessing to the kingdom of God. In fact, just this month, his church is celebrating 30, 30 years in existence. He has had huge impact in Ukraine. He has raised poor people to become millionaires. Within three years in his church, he raised 200 millionaires intentionally. In fact, he set a target for himself to become millionaire, and he was able to achieve it within nine months. The truth is that through his mentorship, I have been able to I realized that it's easy to become a millionaire. There was a training program that I was part. Until this Ukraine war, we were going through a process to become millionaires. And I think uh, the information that I had, uh, am I a millionaire? I think so. I think so. <laughs> I, he's married to a wonderful wife that he calls princess. And God has blessed them with three kids who are now adults so they are not kids now adults now on this note ladies and gentlemen i want to invite dr sandy adelaja dsa you are welcome and the floor is yours how are you sir thank you so very thank you so very much uh my elder Elder Ebenezer, thank you for inviting me again. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be here with you and to be here with Kingdom Economic Forum. You know, uh, as I sat here lis listening to you, I was contemplating on the on your movement, on this organization that you created, Kingdom Economic Forum. Uh, and I'm thinking of, of course, Nigeria, and I'm saying, oh, wow, I wish Nigerians also will establish something like this, an organization like this, Kingdom mm -hmm. Economic Forum, or maybe they will call it something else. Uh, a forum where Christians will spearhead the uh, economic recovery of their nations and um, you know, bring different people from all churches, different churches, different denominations, Christians, unbelievers, to one top to, to a platform where they could address the issues of uh, prosperity, poverty, economic recovery, and national transformation. But so, but you are the forerunner, and you have done that in Ghana. So I want to commend you, uh, uh, Ebenezer, for having the grace and the fortitude to bring people together from all spheres of life to be able to empower your nation. I appreciate it. I came to Ghana last year. Is it last year? I think, yeah, last year. Yeah, last year, sure. Yeah, and I saw what you are doing, what you are doing on the ground. This man is a silent achiever. He's, you are only me quiet and silent, but what I saw on the ground, I see that you are a doer, a performer, and an achiever. And I want to thank God for your life. And I want to appreciate you and say, may the Lord keep on blessing you, increasing you, and use you to touch the length and breadth of Ghana, West Africa, and Africa, and beyond, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to also acknowledge all the members and participants of uh, Kingdom Economic Forum. You are in a good team. 
and you are in a safe hand, in a good hand. Um, there is another Ghanaian that is also <laughs> uh, wrecking havoc to the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. He's in um, America, though, but I'm going to be with him next next week. This, this next week, yeah, Saturday. Yeah, next week. week. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. He is also um, <laughs> a bulldozer in the spirit, yeah. <laughs> a carrier of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's called uh, Doctor Benjamin Manu. I don't know, maybe. Anyway, you check him up on Facebook. He's, explo he's an explosive guy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you people, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by you Ghanaians, what you are doing, and the way you are accepting kingdom, <laughs> maybe, maybe you are accepting kingdom message like this, because I've not mentioned the names of uh, big men of God in your own country. Because yeah. in Nigeria, anybody that will associate with me will first of all look back to see <laughs> that they will not they will not hammer him in Nigeria because they will say you are shooting with Pastor Sunday that is calling out this man, big man of God and those people who are disciples of the man of God will, <laughs> will come <laughs> after the person. Anyway, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Kingdom Economic Forum participants, I want to say you people have this discernment. You have discernment. And uh, for you to associate with uh, Ebenezer, may the Lord bless you. So today, I don't know why Ebenezer gave me this talk. I've written a whole book about it, but this message I'm going to give is not from that book. And mm. the book I wrote about it, Ebenezer mentioned it today. Uh, why does God take money from the rich, I mean, from the poor and give to the mm. rich? So mm. that is a whole book mm. about poverty, about the poor people, about this is, not just about poverty, but about the people. Why do what, it's like God is not just? Why is it that Africa, as we are poor, we are the poorest continent? Everybody knows that. But why is it that it is from this poor continent that all our resources, our raw materials, our everything is leaving us and going to the Euro or America that is already rich? Uh -huh. That's why you did that book. Why does God take? God allows it. It's not just saying that, that the people are so wicked, the world is so bad. No, no. It is also because it is God's order. It is God's order. God makes it to be like that. And because there are principles he has set in place that must be followed. So why does God take from the poor and give to the rich? Well, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. What I want to address today is a direct topic, very specific, that I've been given. The wealth of the poor. The wealth of the poor. So, if in that book we are, we are talking about, we are talking about why does God take from the poor, and why does He take, why does He give what He has taken from the poor to the rich already? We are addressing a whole large topic of mentality and everything. But here, I like the. I was even very impressed by the fact by the by this topic, the wealth of the poor. Why is it that, you know, it's a very intriguing topic. I don't know why Ebenezer and his team came up with this particular topic, but this topic is needed in Africa because we have so many poor people. And we need to be able to show and demonstrate to them the wealth that they already have. So, does the, so will it be true to say that the poor people, any poor person that we see around us is already wealthy? And there is a wealth, or there is uh, a, a wealth for the poor. So the poor, what is that wealth? Of the, the poor is wealthy, the poor has money. Where is that wealth? Where is it hidden? If, 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 if the poor has money, why is he poor? If the poor has wealth, why is he poor? Because there is a difference between money and wealth. So... The, the 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 wealth of the poor, what is it? Listen now, I'm giving the answer now. The wealth of the poor is in hard work. Let's say it in a, that is just one. I can mention many others, but that is just one. But let's say, I will say it in a different way, and this is the topic of my speech to you today. The topic of my speech today is 
hard work is the wealth of the poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hard work is the wealth of the poor. Hard work, hard work, hard work is the wealth of the poor. Hard work, mm. the wealth of the poor. Like I can say, it is not the only one, but that is the basic one that everybody can access. Because through hard work, you the, the, the poor discovers his worth. When you work hard, and when I'm talking about work, let me uh, put that in the right perspective. I'm not talking about work in terms of labor, labor being a laborer, being, being a manual labor, you know, manual work. No, no. When I talk about hard work, I'm talking about a concept that goes beyond manual labor. When I'm talking about hard work, it's a concept that goes beyond manual or labor, laborer's job. Hard work is a concept that permeates every sphere of life oh, but there just for to, to help you grasp what i mean by hard work i will say there are three types of work and it will make you to know what hard works be there is the physical labor physical work it could be a laborer it could be manual work it could be anything that is that demands your physical presence so there's you know, it could be job, it could be the things where you go to work, work right? Hard, that is uh, physical work. Then there is the second level of work, which is mental or intellectual work. It's also hard work. Okay, so when I talk about hard work, I'm not just talking about physical work, I'm talking about intellectual work, mental work. Then, number three, when we talk about work, we're also talking about spiritual work or spiritual labor. So when I say hard work is the wealth of the poor, I'm talking about hard work in all ramifications. Hard work, be it physical work, hard work, be it mental hard work, be it spiritual hard work. So hard work, anywhere you have defined for yourself that you are interested in, if you put in the hard work, it will lead to wealth. So for example, through work, I, this, a man, any poor person can discover that is worth something. So what I recommend to people is, the first level of work that every person must pay attention to is not physical work. It's not going to a job. Because a lot mm -hmm. of people, especially in Africa, when they finish school, they begin to look for work. And when they look for work, they are talking about job. Mm -hmm. They are looking for salary work. But what the most important work out of the three works is the mental work. Mental work, mental labor, mental work. Before you do anything physical, learn to possess and to master mental work. Any person that is committed to any form of work, either spiritual or physical work, without first of all excelling in mental work, that person Will be, a, will be a slave to one person or the other. You will be a slave to others. Even before looking for a job, make sure that you excel in mental work. And when I talk about mental work as well, I'm not referring to going to school to get a degree or a diploma or certificate. It could include that. But that is not the basis of mental work that I'm talking about. When I talk about mental work, I am talking mainly about self-education. 
self-education. The ability to discover things for yourself and by yourself. The ability to go out, all out, seeking for relevant knowledge to you, to seeking the kind of knowledge that you need for exploit, for exploit. And that could include school knowledge, it could include degree knowledge, it could include diploma knowledge, but not defined entirely by it. So mental work is based on not just education, but it's based on a hunger and a pursuit of knowledge. And that knowledge must lead to understanding. And that understanding must end up in wisdom. So anyone that just says, I got a job, even if they are going to pay you $1 million a month, but you don't, you are not a master. You have not mas mastered your mind. You have not become a master in mental knowledge. That job that's paying you one million will make you to become a slave to the person that is giving you that job. But if you are a master in that area of knowledge, mentally, you've self-educated yourself and you know all that you need to know mentally, any work that you now go to do after that, you become the master. Mm. For you to master anything, you must first master yourself with true mental knowledge. When we talk about mental knowledge also, I'm referring to things like master critical thinking. That's connected to your Mind, mental knowledge. You must master not just acquisition of knowledge, not just studying and reading alone, but the ability to digest, to analyze, to criticize, and to separate the knowledge that you are getting from other knowledge that you are comparing it to. So analysis, analytical thinking is the core of this mental knowledge that I'm talking about. I don't know of Ghana, but in Nigeria, and I think most of Africa, correct me if I'm wrong, there is no subject from primary school to secondary school, maybe only in higher institutions and university, they have subjects like analytical thinking. The same applies oh. here. Sorry? We don't, we don't have here. Okay. What about critical thinking? No, really. Okay. You don't have it as a subject national from the government, from the no, national? No, no. We don't. Okay. That That is a problem. But if you go to Europe, you go to uh, any country in Europe, or you go to America, from, pri from primary school, your children will be coming back home to question you. <laughs> your children will be coming back home to say, Daddy, why? That is not supposed to be so. This is not the way. They will be correcting you. You know why? Because it is compulsory. It develops the mental progress the mental prowess. Without that mental capability, there is no work at all. Any other work you go for, see, from that point on, either it is spiritual work, can you imagine? People are doing spiritual work. Okay, for example, and I know that Ghanaians know what I'm talking about. You could be a pastor, and you're saying, oh, I'm doing spiritual work, or oh, I'm working for God. And you could be a slave. Mm. 
where you are working for, trying to please God or work for God. Denominations and churches and fathers will make with your pure heart. You come to church with pure heart to serve God. They will make you a minister or a pastor and put you somewhere and make sure you are subjected to them and make sure that you become a slave to, to the extent that whenever you want to do whatever God has told you to do or you want to move on or you want to you know, just follow God's lead in your life, you will need to become a problem. <laughs> if you are working on Spiritually, you are fasting, you are praying, you are preaching, you are going to do missions. Yeah. But because you have not conquered your mind, you have not achieved mental prowess in mental hard work, you have become poor. Even if they are paying you, I, I don't know what. Because you have become poor because for if you master yourself mentally, if you had done mental work before going to join or submit yourself to any denomination or pastor, you will have too much light to be captivated. You have to, <laughs> you have too much light. If you don't work, nobody can achieve it. Nobody can dominate you in this life. Let me, I bet that any poor person that will have access to knowledge and develop his mind and put that as the most important area of his development will thrive, will, ex will, will ex excel, and will never be in bondage of poverty. He will not even be in bondage to men or being bondage of men. Mental progress. So, what is the wealth of the poor? Hard work is the wealth of the poor. And out of the three possible works that are possible, that are, that are in existence, out of the three possible works that exist, the one you should focus on first before going to spiritual, because if you don't do that mental work and you don't develop yourself mentally first, especially in critical thinking and in analytical thinking and in associative thinking, if you don't develop your critical thinking, in fact, I have a whole series, of, but it's a whole series on my YouTube. People who know my YouTube will tell you. It's called the thinking series. Just thinking, ability to think. And it has a sister. <laughs> the sister on my YouTube there, the sister of critical thinking is, I mean, not critical thinking, it's called thinking series, is the truth series. Because if you want to enslave people, you have to force and enslave them mentally. But if you want to set people free, mentally or financially, if you want to empower people, don't just give people money without first of all empowering them mentally. That's why uh, Bora Ebenezer was talking about my other book that is called The uh, the Poverty Mentality and the Abundance Yeah. Because you have to first of all change people's mentality. If you are just giving them money without changing their mentality, you are just pouring water on, uh, <laughs> on the empty rock. pot. On the, yeah, on the rock. So, uh, uh, so there are three. So, hard work, hard work. I'm not talking about just any hard work. You see, hard, the difference between hard work and just work is that, of course, hard work will also be slave work will also be called hard work when people are making you to work hard. hard. But the difference really between hard work and just work is that hard work is something that you pursue by yourself. That by your understanding, that I understand that I need this, and you are pouring yourself into it. And you are acquiring it by yourself. You are doing that hard work by yourself. But ordinary work is what is required of you. Mm. Maybe your boss or your people are telling you to do that, or your school, you have to go to the curriculum, you have to pass the exam and everything. 
But if you could get any poor person together, for fact, Pastor uh, Elder Ebenezer just told you now, yeah, that in three years we're able to raise 200 million. Now, for example, for me, it's easy. I know that give me poor people, it doesn't matter from the street oh, or from primary school oh, or from university oh, or from secondary school, it doesn't matter where you just gather. Even when you there from alcoholism or drug addiction, just give me, make them listen, just make them listen to me enough. You will see what they will become. <laughs> if they want to become millionaires, they will become millionaires. Doesn't matter where they're coming from. Because I will going to set them free first in their minds. Mm. And from there, I will empower their minds. Mm. And from there, we will give them, teach them hard work. Now go and work hard physically. Because when you're already empowered mentally, when you work hard physically, you dominate the earth. Mm -hmm. You cultivate the earth. Same, when you now go to work spiritually, you go there as saviors of the earth. Mm -hmm. So, through hard work, especially mental, the most important aspect of work is not even spiritual. Because you could be doing, you know there are a lot of people in Africa who are doing spiritual work. And what, what is the aspect of spiritual work? You are fasting, you are praying, you are preaching, you are, you know, doing spiritual work that we all know about. But if, and they are still poor and slaves and being exploited on daily basis. You, with, with the reason why I become emotional when I talk about the way people who are serving God, who want to serve God, the way they have been exploited is that it, whenever I talk about it, I'm remembering hundreds of stories. For example, when I came to Ghana, there is somebody who met me, maybe at the hotel or something. But this person was making international impact. It was the first Ghanaian and the first African to be employed either in the UN or World Bank or something. But because he loved God so much, and you know, the way people call in churches, oh, God, serve God, if you don't serve God, you have to, to serve God, you have to go to full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. if you, have you had that time before? <laughs> it's just like saying, I had a minister now should leave his job, leave his business, and just go and do <laughs> full-time ministry because he wants to serve God. Of course, they made him assistant pastor. They, they first of all made him elder assistant pastor and made him full time minister. They are paying him salary. It got to a point that this person that is was schooling his children over, overseas before, it got to a point he couldn't, he, he cannot even feed his family. Somebody of international value standard, just because he has become a slave in spiritual work. Because he wants to serve God. Now that his eyes started opening, he, he now told uh, his church that I want to you know, start a, God has put it in my heart to start another business while I'm a pastor. He said, no, if you're a pastor here, yeah, you cannot do your own business. You cannot do business or otherwise we are going to fire you or you are going to, something like this. He has become, if he said, but I want to feed my family, I cannot, oh, there's, then you are going to be a betrayer, what they call a rebel, uh, everybody is going to be against you, and he cannot risk that. Risk that. This is somebody who worked with his own leg to come and volunteer. He became a slave because mentally he had not set himself free first, mm -hmm. even though educated on the highest level. So it's different. Because if you have set yourself free mentally, you will not believe anybody that will tell you to forget to leave your business, to leave your work, to, you know, and then. You become a destitute just because you want to serve God. So people are serving God meant, I mean, uh, spiritually. And I mean, in Nigeria and I think in Ghana also, you are a medical doctor or a, a, you are a professional. They will say, oh, come and become parallel. Come and become a pastor in the church. So even as a professional person, you can never attain the height anymore because you don't have 100% education. You are, you are thinking that serving God is the one you are doing in the church. And the one, the, your own professional thing, you cannot dedicate, you cannot excel, you cannot become the top anymore. But they will sit there, you use the money you are making 
from your profession, from your job, not to take care of your family, but to come and use it to invest in their church, in their whatever ministry, because you are the pastor. So you have to use your own money to subsidize it. People who are educated are becoming slaves. You will become a sheep slave, a useless sheep slave, because you have not empowered your mind. But someone who has empowered your mind will say, rubbish, why, what, what will I, I will serve God on my own, I will have my own organization, I will have my own NGO, I will serve God without anybody putting me under duress. So, the work, the, 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 the uh, hard work is a wealth of the poor. But it has to start with mental hard work. Because through hard work, the poor man discovers himself, especially through mental hard work. He discovers himself. He discovers his ability. He discovers his capacity. He discovers his potential. Through hard work, he discovers that he can conquer the world, that there is no limitation for him. Through hard work, he discovers the greatness of other men that have gone before him. Through mental exploit, he begins to ride and soar with the egos of this world who have gone in the ages and who are, who, who are living in this generation as well. Through hard work, you cannot remain poor because you discover so much knowledge. You are so empowered that you begin to empower other people also. And the people you empower, they will show gratitude. But through hard work, you don't just discover yourself. Through hard work, you discover nature. Because when you read about different things, different things, they are exposed to you, the beauty and the greatness of what God has created. And how that could be used to further and to, 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 to enhance yourself, your progress, and your environment. Hard work is the wealth of the poor, especially mental hard work. Because through mental hard work, you don't just discover yourself, you don't just discover nature, you discover the riches of the earth. So hard work is the wealth of the poor. Because through hard work, you discover the treasure in people around you. And how you go invest in them, develop them, and make yourself rich in people. You discover the treasure of the earth, the land, trees, rivers, oceans, Sky, you discover the treasure and the wealth in everything. Hard work is the wealth of the poor. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Amazing. <hard> yes. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. <laughs> I should stop, eh? <laughs> oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know, through hard work, you will discover that what the scripture says. Because the scripture in Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you for I am fearful. I am fearful. I'm marvelous. I'm, I'm fear, fearfully made. Mm -hmm. I'm marvelous at your work. I'm fearfully made. Through hard work, you will begin to see that you don't have anything to do with power. You are great. You are bigger than you think about yourself. You are marvelously made. You are marvelously and fearfully made, but you have to discover it. If you don't discover it, others will exploit you. Mm -hmm. You will discover that you are a chosen generation. You will discover that you are a royal priesthood. You will discover that you are a, by yourself a holy nation. No other person must exploit you. Mm -hmm. Through hard work, you become we, each one of us, or either you are poor, you are black, or you are white. Or Hard work makes hard work makes you to become a creator. You begin to create things. You begin to invent things. In, in innovation becomes to come out of you naturally, just because the thanks to all the knowledge that you have gained, you become an inventor and innovator. But true hard work, mental hard work, you don't just become an inventor and innovator. Listen to me now. 
hard work, mental hard work, makes you to become a co-creator with God himself. Mm. God can partner with you. You can enter into partnership with heaven because you have known so much. You have discovered so much. God will be pouring ideas into you like water. Mm. Things will be coming out of you. That's why people are asking, how come you have written over close to 500 books? How come? A one human being, Mm. <laughs> hard okay. work, mental hard work, will be pouring so much. You will be the, <laughs> you will be the handmaid of God. You become the extension of heaven. You will become co-partner, co-creator with God Himself because He could trust you. He could pour His mind, His knowledge, His revelation, His insight, His ideas into you. He could rain the blessings of heaven upon you, just like in Genesis chapter two. You remember in Genesis chapter 2, God created everything, God created man, but they said the, the grass and the trees were not growing up because there was no man to take you know, This was before God created man. He said there was no man to take responsibility for, to work. So God created man and put him in the, in the place. And it is only after God put man there and man took responsibility to walk the ground. If man began to walk, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. It is that hard work that made all the grass and the trees and the things to begin to grow. Hard work makes you go to become your partner. It will soak you with several ideas and abilities. I mean, look at the heroes of the Bible. Thanks to hard work, they fulfill their calling and they fulfill the purpose of God on the earth. Jesus, is that not hard work for him to go for 40 days to work? I mean, to, to, to fast and pray? Is it not hard work for him to be, walk, be walking from town? They said he goes from city to city, village to village, preaching the gospel and healing the sick. That is hard work right there. Look at Daniel. They were slaves. But mental progress, mental hard work <laughs> turned him from a slave, poor slave, to become the prime minister of the nation, of the nation that conquered him. Paul himself said, but I'm the least of the apostles. But because of the work I put on board, I labor more abundantly than them all. I labor more abundantly than all everybody. As a result, I became who I became the first apostle. Hard work is the key. Hard work is the key. Look at Joseph. It is not the dream that made Joseph who, who Joseph became. I mean, when they put him in the hard, in the they, they sold him as a slave. But in his master's house, he was so good. Even in prison, he, he became so he excelled. Hard work is more. In fact, he became also the, the next to the pharaoh of, it, in, of the, the land that conquered him. The hard work, mental hard work, especially, will make, will make you the channel through whom God could pass his grace, could release his wonders on the earth. Anyway, another, another point. Hard work will help you to become a producer. You cannot be work hard mentally and not produce something. You will begin to produce something mm. when you exploit, when you get mental, when you work hard on yourself, on your mind. Ideas will come that will lead to creation of rules and services. Hard work makes you to become a producer. A, create, a creator, but a producer of goods and services. And by the time you exchange those goods and services to, for, 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 for money, you become rich. Hard work guarantees you quality of life. Mm -hmm. Hard work guarantees you to be a source of blessing to others. And hard work will make you and provide for you security of life, materially, financially, and spiritually. You will, you will dominate around you. Hard work, the one that you pursue by yourself, not the one that everyone are asking you to do. The self-education, the self-knowledge, the, the one that you pursue by yourself will bring you satisfaction and, a, self of, and a, a sense of fulfillment. Hard work will produce for you wealth and hard work will always guarantee you results, even if it's not immediate, but it must be continuous. And that is what will make the difference between you and the world around you. Well, let me stop now and see if uh, 
Elder Ebenezer who want to open the floor uh, for questions or anything. But if not, you know, we'll continue. But uh, I, I'm hearing you. But before All I right, go, thank let, you. let, let okay. me just say, in John chapter 5, verse 17, you know what Jesus said? Say Jesus answered them, my father walks hitherto, up to now, and I walk also. They were workaholic. Both God and Jesus were both workaholic. They say Jesus, God rested on the seventh day, but to give Jesus said, my wife, my father works all the time. He doesn't take break. It is just for us on the earth. He, 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 he rested on the seventh day. That means he stopped work. He stopped creating on the stopped creating something on the earth. But in the universe and in heaven, he keeps on working mm. every day. Mm. God is a worker holy. Jesus said, because I have seen that my father like this, I oh I work also. He was, he's also a worker holy. If we become like that, there is no holding us back. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 14 says, diligence leads to wealth. He said, he become a poor that deals with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent will make rich. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you very much, DSC. Amazing. So, <laughs> hard work is the wealth of the poor. Hard As work is the wealth of the poor. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, DSC. Wow. So many questions will be coming. And if you have questions, you can send to the chat boss for me to read. Also, uh, you can raise your hands if you want to make a comment or ask a question as well. But DSA, I have somebody here. The DSA has said it all. But the question is, man has an elect to be poor or to be wealthy. For me, some people elect to be poor, so they do not understand any adventure to, liber to liberate their mental faculties and consciousness. On the other hand, those who elect to create wealth first liberate their mental faculties. Yes. Example, both the poor and the rich are given 24 hours a day. But in view of the fact that the poor man's mental faculties are not liberated, they stay poor. That's a comment from somebody. It's very correct. I agree with that. Can you give me... The questions can come on the floor for me. All right. All right, I, I'm having a small technical, so I've asked my technical person to project the questions for me. Please, uh, if you raise your hand, we will allow you to make, ask your question. DSA has concluded that the wealth of the poor is hard work. The wealth of the poor is hard work, and he has focused on the mental work or the intellectual work. And that's where he's advising us. So if you have any question, any clarity, any thoughts, please, my technical people will allow you in to uh, Anyone? OK. We have Enoch Asari raising the hand, please, if you can allow Enoch to. All right, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, a lot of times when you visit or you attend a lot of seminars, you hear several speakers speaking about working hard and working smart. Um, in the context of the mental picture or mental definition he has given to us this evening. How do we differentiate the two? Are they moving in tandem? Um, okay. Can I speak now? Go ahead, DSC. Um, I, I know that it's possible to work uh, smart, but 
I don't put that forward. Because that concept of working smart makes people to try to think that they could take shortcut. Mm. It encourages shortcut. And that's why I'm not uh, a proponent or an advocate of working smart. I believe that, yes, it is possible to work smart, but don't try to bring it to the mental work. Mm. Mental work, if you empower yourself, you work at mentally, then you know how to work smart. Please, play down working smart. And uh, pay more emphasis on working hard. That's what I would say. That's a wonderful one. There's a, somebody has a question. Says, I'm working hard, but my life isn't flourishing. What? Yes. That is I don't problem. understand what to do. Yes, somebody. that is the problem. You are working hard, but I'm not telling you about working hard like that. I said work, work, hard work must start with mental mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. It's not the act of working hard. If you work hard without first of all conquering yourself mentally, without first of all developing your mental faculties, without first of all developing critical thinking, without first of all developing analytical thinking, if you don't first of all conquer there, you will become a slave to that your work. Mm. That your work will dominate you instead of you dominate the earth. In the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 says, go and have dominion. You mm. dominate the earth. But if you don't have mental prowess, You've not developed your mind. You go to work without that. You will be dominated. You will be exploited mm. by the by the work itself that you have done to work. By the hard work you are doing. That hard work will become dominant. It will become your punishment. It will be oppressing and dominating you. And even men that you are working with, they, when they will begin to dominate you as well. Even systems, even churches, we will turn you to instruments of. Uh, exploitation. There's another question, DSA. From your experience, what makes it very difficult to move church people from a place of poverty and motivate them enough to want to change their lot? When it comes to church people, the most uh, important reason or the single uh, most important reason why the church people cannot uh, are, are, are remain in poverty is because of the wrong doctrines that pastors and church leaders are propagating. And number one of those doctrines say is that the key to wealth is or to prosperity is giving. Anybody that teaches you that giving, especially giving to church will bring you prosperity is a scammer. And that person is a deceiver. It's not just a scammer, it's a deceiver. And that person is the only one, especially if he is the pastor, is the only one that will get rich. What, if you go to any church, you will see who is more, who is doing better off. It is the person who is receiving the money that is getting better off. So that is a mistake. The church must go back to teaching principles and loss of money. It is the knowledge of and the practice of the loss of money that make people rich. But that is not what the church is teaching. When you come to church on Sunday or Thursday, they are not teaching you the principles of wealth creation. They are not teaching you the principle of dignity of labor. They are not teaching you the principle of production of goods and services. They are not teaching you the, 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 the principles of creation of creation of wealth itself. It is those principles of wealth creation that can make church members rich. But instead of church people, especially in Africa, and in charismatic churches of America, we do, we, they are more balanced there. But in Africa, we are taking it to the extreme. They will tell you that it is by giving you will come, come out of poverty. Or it is by giving that uh, your curses will be removed. And it is by giving that you will become rich. It is a lie. People don't become rich because they give. They practice giving of tithe and offering. No. You must, you must follow the laws of money, the principles of creation of goods and services, and the exchange of those goods and services for wealth. Okay. People don't become rich by giving. 
People don't become rich by working. People don't become rich by going, because you see many people who are working, working hard also, and they are not rich. Because there are principles behind wealth creation and being rich. People don't become rich because they are educated. There are a lot of educated people who are not rich. So people don't become rich by praying. There are a lot of people who pray fast, but they, don't, they are not rich. People don't become rich because they go to church. If there are a lot of Muslims who never enter church, and they are rich. And there are a lot of people who go to church, they are not rich. So what is it that makes a difference? What makes a difference is the loss of money that people know and follow and practice. But that law of money, that law of, uh, of, of, that law of money to, that makes people rich, is not by giving and tithe and offering in the church. Even though I am for giving tithe and I am for giving offering. But that, that is, there is a different reason why God instituted praying of tithe and offering. And uh, uh, this is not for you to become rich or to become prosperous. But I support giving tithe and offering. I practice it and I preach it, but for other reason. If you want, we'll discuss it next time. Wonderful. Do you say another question is for such wonderful insight, please? I would like to know if there are any mentorship platform available for interested persons who want to be raised in this regard. Thank you. <laughs> this is one where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are you are you are being mentored. So please. And then, <laughs> like he mentioned, he has he has uh, you can go to Sunday at the larger block. You can have over five thousand messages. Take your time, yeah. listen to them, and you you be marvel about. There what, is a what? there is a series on my YouTube, Doctor Sunday Adelaide YouTube page that's called the Lost of Money or Financial Series. Financial series. If you just point that financial series, it's free of charge. All these teachings are more are there. But apart from that, by the grace of God, I'm planning to come to Africa one day, and when I come to Africa, I want to do a school of raising millionaires. And in this school, by the grace, through this school, I want to raise 10 million. Do what I have done in Ukraine. I want to do it many times over. I want to raise 10,000 millionaires in all across Africa, in US dollars, millionaires in US dollars, just through the loss of money. And I will show you so that it's not just white people who this law works for. No, that our own black people will become millionaires in US dollars, not in cities, US dollars. Just by through these principles, that it is only lots of money that make people. And this school will start from Ghana, so DSA, we have the <laughs> land. So we yeah. <laughs> DSA also mentioned the strength in relations and networks. How can the church be mobilized such that the different gifting and resources and minds are harnessed for the liberation of the poor in the church? You know, the church these days has become one man show. There are many of the churches, have be, it, they have become one man empires. Uh, I, but when I was in Ghana, though, I saw a denomination they called Pentecost. You know, what that, that, that is not a one man empire. But, you know, and the man that is now the president of Shema, what they call, they, he is bringing the kingdom teaching, he is introducing kingdom teaching like, like it's a revolution that is bringing to Ghana. So that is the biggest problem we have in churches. You said, how can we mobilize the churches? First of all, you have to convince the leaders of those churches. You have to convince the, the papas and the, the you know, the, everybody control their own churches, their own people. <laughs> so that is where the impediment is. <laughs> Wonderful. Is somebody raised their hand? I'm not seeing it on my platform please uh, technical person is somebody raising their hand if, if you can allow the person or is there any other question mumba mumba is raising his hand jo joshua and sunny michael is raising his hand please allow them to speak uh good evening dr sunday wow what a powerful session uh this has been so eye-opening i've been following you even when especially here in zambia a lot of people tell you uh, don't listen to Dr. Sunday. He's lost it. So no, but the man is telling us the truth. So I just wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to first and foremost just take the opportunity to appreciate uh, what you are doing. And I think I've, I've spoken to you before on Facebook. So it was very. I was very excited when I saw that there will be a live uh, class because I wanted to just be here. 
Uh, what I wanted to say uh, as a person who uh, I think I joined the session when you were talking about doing mental uh, mental work. And for me, this is a very big uh, confirmation because I'm pastor in a church and I'm also running a business. Now, I discovered something. Sometimes we pray for good opportunities to come. But when they come, I discovered again, we're not fully maximizing them. You find that maybe you go for a negotiation and your clients even tell you, no, but we thought you would charge us more money than you are charging us. Then I realized something. I was thinking through it yesterday. I realized that, you know, having grown up in in in, in a very humble background and being used to not having abundance, it's I realized that my mind has been programmed to uh, not to make the best of many opportunities. So I started telling myself, I need to reprogram my mind because in as much as I'm working hard, I am not reaching my full potential. You find that you get good contracts, but you don't execute them to to and come out of, let's say, you know, the cycle of constantly being under financial pressure and things like that. And I realized it was all happening in my mind. And you find that you you, you negotiate and, uh, and cut yourself as you're negotiating or you, you know, just a lot of things happening in that area. So I wanted to find out from you, Dr. Sandy, uh, what is what is the best way for a person? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who's willing to work very hard. I put myself out there. But how do you begin the, the practical process of reprogramming your mind for success? How, especially that I think I was listening to your teaching two days ago on worldviews, the one you did where you're explaining the difference between uh, the African uh, African believers and the European ones. So when I was listening to that, and then you said something about how the environment as uh, has a role to play in how your worldview is shaped. So what as a practical ways a person can reprogram? Having grown up in Africa, in a I'm, I'm living right now. I'm living in a very small town in my country, Zambia, which is said to be a you know a ghost town. Uh, so, and I feel this is what God wants me to be right now. But then how do you reprogram your mind and so that you can have a worldview and a perspective that can allow you to maximize your potential? What are some of the practical things you would do if you are in a position like mine? Very good. Number one, stop reading only Bible and stop reading only Christian books. If you say you are a pastor, Yes, you need to read Bible. You need to read uh, uh, Christian books. You need to read Bible even when you are not a Christian. Anybody needs to read Bible. But that is not enough to make you do exploits. Because you cannot... Anyway, so you know your own area of business. So go and look for literatures that address... You mentioned selling and interacting with buyers. Go and read, you know, go and look for knowledge. Knowledge now is free on the internet, YouTube. Just write on YouTube, clients, buyers, uh, customers, how to deal with customers, how to place prices, everything. Practical things like this. Go and put search for them on Google, on YouTube. You will get no, loads of knowledge. Then you will know how to place prices. You will know how to relate with customers. Then also, you said you are in a small town. I'm just taking things that I just had from you now. You are saying you are in a small town. Then you have to go and read and look and do research. These are mental development, I'm saying, mental knowledge. Go and do research on how to rule and reign and lead and be successful and be prosperous and, uh, and, and be the leader from a small town. You will find tons of stories of people who have been able to develop their projects, their businesses from small town to the whole nation. So they are, they are, the, the knowledge is all out there. Our problem is that we are only reading the Bible or Christian books. But no, go read the Bible, read the Christian book, but go beyond that. Go and narrow your needs, to your search, your research to your needs. Point out where you are. Describe yourself, put it on Google, and begin exploitation and exploration. Because education, mental development is what you do by yourself. It's through self-education. And that self-education starts by you knowing how to practice what we call intellectual curiosity or critical thinking. 
or analytical thinking by searching and develop and developing your mind through those searching and you find answer everywhere. Thank you. The next is both the poor and the rich have God given talent. But the difference comes when the difference comes in where one identifies his or her God given talent to create wealth. This is mental empowerment. The poor will not identify his God given talent and will, will blame the whole world for, the, for his predicament. Yes. These same people are religious fantasists who would spend all time in churches from Monday to Monday. That is a comment from uh, iPhone. Wonderful. I absolutely agree with him. Wonderful. You see, what do in, we need? In, okay. in Proverbs 22, he says, both the poor and the rich, God given eyes. So God has given eyes both to the poor and the rich. So what's the difference? The difference is that the poor uses his eyes just to look. Why the rich uses his eyes to see. Mm. It depends on what you see. If you are not able to see, you will not see opportunities. Mm. And for you to see, you don't see through physical eyes. You see through your mind. Well, no. uh, Hebrews, I mean, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes says, the eyes of the wise is not in their eyes. In the eyes of their face, it's in their mind. mind. So it's uh, the ability to see opportunity. Some two people, the same people will be looking at two different, the same thing. Two different people, the, the same thing. One is seeing money, access, like everything, opportunities, and the other one will be to complaining. <laughs> the poor see, uh, the poor is always by. Joseph Manson, good job done, boss. My question is, how do you discover yourself? Again, everything starts with the mind. The mind. And you have to break the shackles of the mind. How do you discover yourself? It's very simple. I have a whole, a whole book on that. It's called Who Am I? Why am I here? Just go and look for that book. If you cannot, if you cannot buy a book or you cannot find a book, go to the YouTube. I have a whole series called Who Am I? Why am I here? Free on YouTube. By the time you listen, there are about 30 messages there. By the time you listen to one or two or three, in fact, somebody listened to one and discovered it just said, I'm done. Mm. But there are 30 of them. Mm. You don't have problem. Look for knowledge. <laughs> Look for knowledge. Amazing. <laughs> DSC, do you agree that there are more poor people in church than in other religious groups? And what of are the course. three simple... What are three simple steps that can be used to move people out of poverty? First of all, people in the church, people, pastors should stop telling people that they have to come to church every, no, seven days a week or three days or five days a week. It is, it, it is crippling them. It is you know, telling, I mean, turning them to slaves and turning the church to slave camp. Because that time they are going to be riding or walking from home to church and everything every day, they, they could be developing themselves. They could be in, in, engaged in uh, self-education. They could be doing research on their sphere of calling. They could be going to do what God has called them to do. They could you don't waste all time on religion alone. Come for prayer meeting, come for their practice, come for this, come for this. No time for you for self-development. Of course, we are going to have more poor people than anybody else. That's number one. Number two, the churches must begin to have seminars or training where they only teach the loss of money or economic empowerment to people and bring specialists and train them and help their members for free so that they don't pay. If they're already paying their tithe, they don't need to pay for those things. You train them, empower them to so be able to set themselves free mentally. Number three, church members who are successful need to open their doors and their arms and give business opportunities like we did in our church. One person became a millionaire. I said, you must disciple 10 people and I give you one year to turn them to millionaires like yourself. Mm. If wow. pastors do that and not just be asking them to be giving them uh, uh, 
tithe and offering, love offering, prophetic offering, and all those kind of manipulations. And they care about ordinary people. Churches will become, well, will great raise more rich people than anywhere else. Wonderful. Wonderful. What do you think a poverty trap is? And what is it? And is it easy for people to escape it? What do you think a poverty trap is? And is it easy for people to escape it? Poverty tra uh, trap, number one, is when people tell you the wrong information. Hmm. There, there is one person that wrote, Kiyosaki, I think they call it, that wrote a book that says, uh, poor daddy, rich dad, or something. Mm, yeah. daddy. So he was saying, what is daddy, rich dad used to tell you know, What is poor daddy used to tell him, and what is rich daddy used to tell him. Everything starts with the kind of information you expose yourself to. So the number one uh, poverty trap is when people are giving you the wrong information about making money or becoming rich. And first on that list for Christians is that by giving offering to, to pastors or to church, you become rich. You will, you will remain perpetually poor. Even if you are rich before you become poor in that church, you will lose what you have already before you can. You will be doing better before you come to church. When you are in church, you will be, it will become worse because that is the wrong principle. So it is the exposing people to the wrong knowledge is the number one trap of or a poverty trap that people have. So for you to, to, to break that uh, poverty trap, you must be go take, uh, change your environment. Take yourself to a place where people have the evidence and where they will teach you, train you the right things. Go to seminars, go to trainings. You know, pay for seminars, pay for trainings. Look for knowledge. Look for people where people get results. And, you know, keep yourself. We have two more questions to go. Here's the next question. The church will not teach the laws of money, how to create money, how to manage money, how to multiply money. Church will not teach you how to own a product or a service. Exploitation of man by man. This is <laughs> somebody's comment. I, I, agree agree I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. The church... All right. Is there any other last comment, technical person, please? There is somebody who has been raising his hand all the while. It's called. Sandy. Okay, then that could be. That should be the last Hello. one. Okay. Good evening from Nigeria. This is from my church. Okay, he's my countryman. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank God I have a patience to speak with TSE. Maybe, um, Doctor, forgive me, I can't remember your name. Forgive me for that. My name maybe is, you are doing Ghana. My name is Sunday. Yes, boss. Yes, sir. Doctor Alida, I know. The other, the other host. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, Ebenezer. His name is Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Thank you for this opportunity. What I'm trying to do, you are doing um, Ghana because yes, it is coming to Nigeria to come and establish. But whichever way, I know God give us the best. Let me. My question is is the is two questions rather. One, how to do with my life? I so much believe you know, in God. Everything I do, my life, my thoughts, God. But until I come to start listening to DSC on, I think Facebook or YouTube, I can't remember which one is first one. That night, I, I'm crying. I burst in cry because of wasted years, wasted spirituality that thinking everyone is going to come to my rescue. No, know that I need to go out there and take exploit. But thank God it's not that too late. Though to me personally it was seems too late, but I thank God 
that it was not too late. And since then, I've been coming out victoriously, even though it was not as the way I still want it to come out. But I see today, and thank God that it is. Success is running into my life because my mentality has been has been has been free from cage, so much spirituality cage. So I thank God for that. This is my second question. If maybe if you, maybe I explain that uh, I explain away my first question. My first question is that I'm in Nigeria. All that I do, I try so much to work hard mentally to understand people, to understand especially my feet. To work hard. It seems I'm still being limited. Maybe I do I put it back to me because I'm not well educated. But with the knowledge I gather from church, from people I've been helping myself with, there are goals. It seems I'm looking at it that I, I work me, I work hard, physical hard work, mental hard work, thinking about solution, how to solve, how to resolve whatever that comes my way, and it comes easy. Like you explain or um, be smart. You can, we can't say somebody is smart. In times of war, well, you must your mental thinking must be smart in what you want to do and do it perfect. So I see that my my effort and my struggle was not giving me the reward of my labor. So what would I do more? That's one. Number two, my question number two, I will go direct because I think it's a spiritual way. Having having a dream that. I mean, I become pastor, I lead so much church. But of recent, I dream that I saw Pastor Sunday told me that I should wait 15 years. So is it possible? That's my question. Sir. Okay, thank you so very much. Well, you know, uh, of course, we are believers. We believe in spirituality. We believe in God. We believe, uh, but if you're already in God, if you're already in Christ, you have advantage. Because you can talk to God, you can be a friend of God, you could be led by the Spirit of God, you could read the Bible, you could get direction from the Holy Spirit. Those are advantages. But naturally, naturally, God has made everything possible without spirituality. Let's do spirituality now. Naturally, for Christians or non Christians or atheists, though, God has made Everything because if God doesn't do, he doesn't do it like that, it will not be a fair God. If He says you have to believe in me, you have to pray before anything is available, it's not fair God. God has made everything available for everybody to be So, first of all, you have to overcome the mentality thinking that your success is being held back by some spiritual forces, even if it is true that spiritual forces are holding you back. Deal with it in the name of Jesus. Mm. He said he has given you power over serpents and scorpions and everything. You know, you, you have dominion. He said we are seated at the right hand of the Father. Deal with it. Just cast it out. Don't, don't waste time on that. Don't begin to repeat it that to yourself. The second thing is, I always say this, and it, it's, it's very controversial, and people think I'm crazy or something. When it comes to going to heaven, you need Jesus, you need salvation, you need to born again to so go to heaven. But when it comes to living here on earth, if you when it comes to prospering on earth, you need to have faith in God, yes, but you need to have more faith and belief in yourself than in God. And anybody, everybody who has ever succeeded on this earth is because they have more faith in themselves than they are trying to put. They don't put faith in God and say, okay, God will do this for me. I, I trust God. God will do it. God will do it. That is why Christian people are still waiting for God and they are dying. Their children will come and still say, God, we are trusting God. God will do it. God will do it. And they are remaining in the church and they are, they are the poorest. But the ones who say, yes, I believe in God. Thank you, Father. I trust you. You have given me everything. 
Now I believe that through your help, because of what you have done for me, because of what you have given me, I believe in myself that it will work out. I will do it. it I, will, I will do everything. I will equip myself. I will use your knowledge. I will gain more knowledge. I will go and work out. I will do what I need to do. Having faith in yourself, the ability to trust that by God's grace, you will excel. By the grace of God, you believe that you can do it. You will do it. It will work out. That faith and belief in yourself is what has given birth to every exploit. And it is what has given birth to every great person who has ever succeeded in anything. You must have, when it comes to success on earth, living here on earth, I'm not talking about going to heaven, when it comes to success on earth, you need more faith in yourself. Trust in yourself, believe in yourself, become fanatically positive about yourself, positive about yourself, confidence. You need more confidence in yourself than in prayers, than in, you know, waiting for God to do something. You will wait tired. You will wait till you die. Nothing. God has done everything. God is a just God. When he created man and woman, he said God looked at everything he has created and he blessed them. Be fruitful. Multiply. And, you know, and so do the, he, he has already given you all the blessings that will be required for you to succeed, to be fruitful. For you, to not just be fruitful, to multiply upon the earth. For you to even subdue the earth. He has, for you to still be waiting for him to come and do something for you like that, you are abusing God. You are, you are insulting God. You are being ungrateful to God. You now need to begin to believe in yourself that I can do it. I can do all things through Christ who works through me. You need more faith in yourself than in God if you want to be successful on this earth. Cultivate faith in yourself. Cultivate that no spiritual power can hold me down. Even the spiritual power, I believe that God has already overcome, he has already overthrown principalities and powers on my behalf. I believe that I will go through them. I'm going to subdue them. That faith in yourself will take you through. Thank you so much. Thank you, DSC. Thank you very much on behalf of Leaders of Kingdom Economic Forum. We want to thank you very much for availing yourself. We know this year we'll be having other meetings with DSC, so please take note of that. As he did mention, this coming Saturday, there's a program that is being organized by Global Kingdom Pastors and Leaders Summit. They are discussing the Kingdom driven church and it's going to be via zoom at the time is it 12 a.m gmt okay 8 p.m est 2 p.m cet and then i will share some of the flyers so that we can join and be blessed in this wonderful program it's being hosted by brother dr benjamin menu who is based in the u.s beloved i thank you very much on this note we want to thank you for your time uh, sorry, you could not take more questions because our time is up. We've gone beyond three minutes. So please, uh, we will make the videos and the recordings available and then we have to encourage, we want to encourage you to listen. I have mentioned all the books here. Why does God take from those who don't have and give to the, those who have? Uh, where there is a problem, there is money, poverty mindset versus abundant mindset. DSA has so many books. Please we want to encourage you to read. These are some of the books that you read to have this, to be able to uh, have mental renewal. You work very hard by reading some of these books to change your life. Some things people have used 40 years to accomplish. You use one week to get that knowledge to be able to do better than whatever others might have done. Beloved, on this note, we want to say thank you very much. Until we meet again. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. DSA. Thank you. you. God bless. Thank you very much. Bye. God bless you. Dude. Bye. DSA.